Hey Radnor, thanks for tuning in to part two of our ComDev Spotlight featuring the Radnor Township Health Division. I'm Molly Gallagher, Radnor's PIO, and I'm excited to introduce you to Health Officer Marie Carbonara. Wow, has she been busy this year. As we continue to live through the COVID pandemic, we are eager to take the Radnor community behind the scenes. The Health Division is a vital part of the Community Development Department, and in tandem, they work to keep the community healthy and safe. Okay, hi Molly. Uh, my name is Marie Carbonera. I'm the Radnor Township Health Officer and I've been here about a little over four years. Okay, great. And what is your background? Do you have a career history in municipal government or did you come to Radnor from the private sector? Well, thank you for asking. So I have um, about 20 years experience as a registered nurse and most of my experience is in the clinical setting, whether it be um, working in the school district or working in the hospital. So that's the majority of my ex experience. Um, nursing wise. So I, and about four years ago, I um, often thought about uh, transitioning into public health. So that's what brought me into this role at this time. Okay, great. And why Radnor specifically? Is there anything in particular that you love about working for this community? Okay, so I think, I think what brought me here to Radnor Township is I've been living in a um, nearby neighborhood in Lower Marion Township, which is not that far. Um, for about the last eight years. I have come to love the area. Um, I've, I have I've come to know the area very well. Um, I've, I've been able to integrate the area, so it was really fun, and I look forward to kind of working with the, with the community that way. And as an RN, what skills do you bring um, from your nursing career to this position as health officer? So I... Working as a nurse has taught me many different things. Um, it is, I have learned various skills, uh, aside from clinical skills and you know, learning how to care for somebody medically, um, I have learned to communicate with um, you know, parents, children, family members in regards to very sensitive topics. Um, I have learned to become an educator for you know various various uh, different things whether it's it's if health information related um, whether it's you know related to the care or well-being or safety of those people so the education portion is really you know um, something that I've been able to refine over the years that I could bring into Radnor Township can you just tell us a little bit about the mission of the department sure I can do that um, so, so what we do here in our health division um, within community development is, is first and foremost, we want to enforce the code and make sure our businesses, our residents um, are all in compliance with our you know, township codes and as well as some of the state codes that are involved. Um, with that being said, we do a lot of providing um, health information and health refer referral as far as resources um, that really kind of uh, help our community stay you know as safe as possible. Well, you touched on food services um, in the health division I noticed there are several service offerings so it seems that you interact with police you interact with um, animal control can you talk a little bit about the non-food related service offerings that the division helps with. Sure. So a little bit um, about what we do outside of uh, um, conducting food safety inspections. So we, we, first of all, we report communicable diseases and that's part of what we do. Um, we offer public health information. We offer resources to our community. That's another thing we do. Um, we also, um, <clears throat> we work with some of the other departments on things like um, animal bites. So if there's, uh, you know, we follow up on all animal bite complaints, especially when it comes to humans. So if there's a, an incidence of um, a dog bite, there might be, um, you know, a concern for rabies. So we will look at, we will investigate that. We will make sure there's no public health concerns. We follow up with the police as far as what was reported. And we kind of work together to make sure there's no major concerns with those types of things. Um, we also, you know, one of the good things we do is we do work with the police department because they do offer services within the community and we are able to kind of piggyback and, and kind of chime in that way. We offer, um, or we work with the police as far as offering CPR and first aid training to the community. So we really 
we really do enjoy that part of it. Um, you know, these are all skills that everybody should know. So we are, we are thrilled to be a part of offering that service. Um, we, promote, we promote events that, that maybe our township hasn't seen um, or that our, our community really wants in the neighborhood. So, you know, for example, we, we, ha we were able to facilitate with the American Red Cross and bring, you know, um, a regular blood drive to the, you know, to Radnor Township, which is great. The community really jumped on board. They have this, you know, they can be a part of donating blood and they don't have to travel too far, so. <clears throat> Okay, great. And then this last year in particular, we noticed your participation um, with the Office of Emergency Management and Sergeant Gluck. Can you talk to us a little bit about your responsibilities to OEM? Um, so I work closely with um, Sergeant Gluck um, in everything COVID related. So we, what we typically do is we're involved in decisions um, that, that have to do with keeping our township staff safe. Um, so we, we um, prepare protocols for, you know, the services that the township offer. We uh, prepare uh, protocols as far as COVID is concerned with our staffing. Um, you know, we implement quarantine and isolation procedures within our staff. Um, we also have, early, probably early on in the pandemic, we, we helped or we became a resource resource for businesses within the township reviewing their COVID safety protocol. So that that was pretty interesting. So we got to work with the community that way. Um, so it's a little bit about what we do with, with OEM. Sticking with COVID, how has it changed or expanded your duties here in Radnor? You just covered uh, the addition of OEM, but your day-to-day -day duties as health officer, how has that been impacted? So COVID has um, really kind of changed the way we do things around here. Um, although the township is providing all the services we've, we've, we've you know, always um, offered, they're just, they're provided a little bit differently. So for example, um, we'll take a food safety inspection in mind. So although we are still conducting food safety inspections, we've got to add that COVID component to it. So we've got to, you know, there's no more, it, you know, sharing our computer for signing reports or going over reports. Um, you know, although we are on site in these businesses, you know, we really have to maintain our distance. We typically ask the, um, the businesses to, you know, do all the, everything that we're looking for in the food safety inspections, we have them do it instead of us doing it. So there's this, this component to, um, the inspections, although they are still they are still happening. Can you talk a little bit about how the township has become a resource during the pandemic? So the township really has become um, a really valuable resource to the community um, in so so many different ways. I couldn't even list them here, but I can talk about a few a few different ways. And and one I mentioned earlier is. Radnor Township has been able to provide all of our services or, or most of our services throughout the pandemic, although some other municipalities have not. We've been able to do that. So in, in order to do that, um, you know, we, we gave the public and our staff a safe place to do business. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we set our lobby up, you know, with COVID mitigation in mind. Um, it keeps everybody safe we are, and we are still able to continue our services. Um, we have also, um, our public information officer has set up, you know, a fantastic website and we just kind of, we encourage that w people to go to that website and see all the updated information, whether it's, you know, updated guidance from the CDC, updated guidance from the state or from the county. Um, we take a lot of calls from the community and honestly, we take so many calls from some of our older folks who are either so worried about COVID, they haven't left their house or seen their grandchildren in a year. Um, they're just wondering when they're gonna get their vaccine. They don't have access to the internet. So what we do or what we try to do is we really try to offer them either A, we'll help them out where we can, whether it's signing them up for a vaccine or um, getting in touch with a family member who can kind of guide them through the process or sometimes it's just a phone call and and you know lending an ear and allowing them to express their concerns during this you know very anxious and, and difficult time. 
So Marie, thanks for being here today. It's a great opportunity for our community to hear from the health officer. Can you close out by giving us any helpful hints um, or general community advice as we head into the spring and summer? Sure, I would be happy to. Thanks, Molly. Um, I, think, I think for the community, what, what we would like them to know at this point is, is don't stop what you're doing. Um, even with the warm weather coming and summer approaching and lots of fun events that may kind of uh, creep back in um, to the community or while you're on vacation, we're just asking you to just continue to wear your mask, social distance, um, and do everything you can um, to stay the course um, so we can really continue to move in a po positive directions, in a positive direction, excuse me. Um, one thing I, I definitely want to emphasize is no matter what time we are in, whether it's a pandemic or not, the, the single most important thing you can do that you can teach your kids is wash your hands. Get them in the habit of washing their hands with soap and water every time they come in from outside, every time they come in from the store, um, all throughout the day if they're home. It is, it is honestly the single most effective way that you can prevent all sorts of illnesses and it's going to keep you and your family as safe as possible. Um, and then what we really want to encourage um, to kind of close this out is that we are available for any questions, concerns, comments, or suggestions. Um, we want you to reach out to us with any any health and wellness concerns that you may have and we will guide you as best we can and you can reach me by email you can go to our website um, or you can call us on the phone. Hi Molly, my name is Catherine Carla Magno. Uh, my position is a health inspector and I am going on four years here at Radnor. What is your educational background? How did you decide to become a health inspector? I have a bachelor's in nutrition and a master's in public health. Um, I started out working um, with people to help them lose weight and I just wasn't the fit for me and I wanted to go more the public health route and um, that's how I got here. For those of our community who don't know what a health inspector does, what is a day in the life? What are your responsibilities here at Radnor? I inspect all the food establishments in Radnor Township. I also inspect the schools and then I inspect all the public um, pools in Radnor. Is that on a schedule governed by the state or how often do you go out and what exactly are you looking for in the school inspections? We follow the Radnor Township Ordinance and then the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture Food Code. So we do yearly inspections. Um, the schools are done every six months and then we go out for complaints. I'm looking for um, food safety, overall cleanliness, um, correct temperatures, wearing gloves, washing hands, things like that. Do you conduct these inspections unannounced or do you coordinate with the business owner to set up a date? I Most of them do unannounced. There's a couple places that have um, you know, different time schedules, so I do coordinate with them. And then in terms of COVID and all of the new protocols, especially when this all first started happening, um, what was Radnor's stance in terms of communicating with the local restaurant owners and schools on safety, but also maybe giving wiggle room and a, and a, a curve for learning that otherwise you may not be able to give? Was it a true partnership with the community, like we're learning together, or did you find that you all were um, strict enforcers? I think it's a partnership. Um, Marie and I both have everybody's email address of all the food facilities, the schools, and we just give out information as we get it and we take calls and, you know, both of us try to explain to everybody that we're learning too. And, you know, this is, again, such a hard time, especially for the restaurants. So I think we need to be understanding until it gets to a point. And in terms of uh, community development, the department itself. You all seem to be an annex. The health division seems to um, have their own set of responsibilities. Are there opportunities uh, for you to work with your colleagues in ComDev? How does that interdepartment relationship work? We work closely with the building inspectors. Um, we go, they, they come with us when we're opening new restaurants so they can 
inspect the building portion of it and we do it all together so it's not disjointed and the people who are opening up get confused because that can happen real easily. So we work with them a lot. Um, we work with Kevin in zoning with the parking and the number of seatings and things like that. And then Lisa and Marianne will schedule our, ins um, our inspections. Okay, what's your favorite part about working at Radnor as a health inspector? I have really enjoyed getting to know the people at the restaurants and the schools. And at first it was really tough for me um, coming in and the person who was in my position before was here for so long, so they were used to him. So it was difficult, but now they've become used to me and they, they know what I expect and um, they you know, come to me with questions and I'm open to them. And again, I think it's just a partnership and I enjoy seeing all of them. Thanks, Marie, for your outstanding commitment to the health and well-being of Radnor Township. You and Katie have risen to the occasion to deliver unprecedented service during these truly unprecedented times. And a special thanks for working round the clock with Sergeant Gluck in the Office of Emergency Management. OEM has served as an expert voice for our community and we are all grateful for the resource. Stay tuned for future department spotlight features coming this spring. Thanks to the Health Division and our community for making Radnor one of the best places to live, work, visit, and do business on the main line. See you next time.